Hello and welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be making a Unity level editor using Excel. Yep, that's right, Excel. We can simply edit the document, export it to the CSV file, create a Unity script, import it, the CSV, convert to a level array and then finally build our actual level. This is really useful if you want to have somebody with very little minimal computing skills generate levels for your game or your environment or just simply if you're at a machine that doesn't have Unity installed on. Okay, so let's move into Excel. So I'm going to start by just highlighting 20 by 20 grid. This is just so I can set some formatting to make it easier. We're going to conditional formatting. I'm going to manage rules, create a new rule. I'm just going to say if the cell only contains uh, the number one, I want the format to be, um, I want to fill, I want to make it black, um, and that should do for that rule. Uh, I'm going to create another new rule, uh, same again, cell contains equal to zero format, and uh, this time I'm just going to make it grey so it's easy for me to see what's going on. I could also change the font colour, but for this session I'm going to leave it alone. I can press apply. Okay, so there we go. Now it's obviously blank, so let's just assume it's zero. Uh, I can now, oops. This one there. Uh, I can drag this around. So this is going to be my little walls for my level. I'm going to drag this down. If you don't know what dragging does, it's literally putting the number one. You can see it just here. It's putting a one into whatever cell I dragged by using the fill handle. So I've now got walls all around it. Uh, so there we go. I've got my internal thing. So now I could start to build my sort of my my level, my maze, my labyrinth, whatever you want to call it. Oh, I don't think I like that one. But as I'm saying, you can have people kind of make the levels for you. Again, I don't like that either. Now the this the 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 it's not very it's not very equal. So I'm just gonna highlight all the rows and we'll double click. Um, oh that's a bit too squished but I suppose it feels a bit more appropriate for a level. Um, okay. So you can see I'm slowly building a level up. Um, no I don't like that either. I'm not gonna spend too long on this because obviously you can you can do that as you see fit. Now it's just occurred to me um, that this is not going to fully work because they're just blank but maybe I'll leave and see how that how that operates because uh, I should have really put a zero into each cell and of course if you continue like this you could make games like sort of Pac-Man you could make something like uh, Gauntlet used to be for those who remember the 80s but you can see I'm just sort of putting things in and I think I'll stop there okay so I've got a bit of a level now you can see I've got zeros this could throw our algorithm out because some cells have got zero some are just completely blank but I think we can write some code to handle that a little bit of validation um, so I'm now going to save this now I've already called it level designer with the actual file format for Excel I'm going to keep that so I'm just going to press save but I'm also now just going to go save as um, hopefully this will remember my last folder no it won't so let's just go into, yeah, into level design now. This time I'm going to change this to say CSV. So it's going to save it as a comma separated values page, which is just going to be all the numbers separated by commas. I'll show you that in a moment. If I just press save, again, it has now saved over the Excel file, so I would need to be careful if I want to keep on editing it. Okay, so I'm going to jump over into Unity. I have got a blank project. This is just a very standard uh, core 3D project, nothing fancy in here. Um, I'm going to create an empty. This is where I'm going to create my sort of level um, level loader, I suppose I'm going to call it for, for now. Nothing too fancy. I'm going to right clip, uh, right clip, right click, and create a C sharp script, which I will call um, CSV to level. Um, so it's going to import that CSV file and make it. You can see already I've got the spreadsheet, the original spreadsheet there, and I've got the CSV file. We'll come back to those in a little while. Okay, that's unhappy. Let's pause that a moment. Well, we can see up here while that's doing something weird. We can see it's got the level there as all ones, but it's not formatted very well, but that's okay. Okay, that took a few seconds to process. I'm not sure what it was doing there. But as always, I'm going to double click and go into Visual Studio. Again, it's just using Visual Studio as a text editor. Um, I should really update this to 2022. Uh, it's not got around to it yet. Okay, so here we are in Visual Studio. I've got the code ready to go. I'm just going to have a few global variables that I can access from anywhere. So I'm just going to paste, just push these in. So I've got a public text asset. So that's what's going to actually hold our map CSV file. So I've called it map CSV, but that's where I'm going to drag and drop the CSV file that I just created. I'm then going to create a maze. I might rename this in a little while just to call it level instead. And this is a 2D array. So it's going to store all the rows and columns. Uh, public game object cube 
that's what's going to form all my walls and floors. I'm going to use just one cube for now, but maybe in a little while I'll show you how we could work with multiple cubes. And I've also got a scale variable. This is in case I want to scale up the level um, by whatever magnitude we see fit. For now, I will be just leaving it as one. This is just future-proofing myself for later. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is is load the... Is, well, I don't need to load it because we will have already done it by dragging it across. Is I need to extract the CSV. So extract CSV. Um, I do like putting comments in occasionally. Um, and for this, again, I'm, I'm cheating a little bit so you don't have to watch me type. Uh, I've got a, a variable called strings. This is a string array called lines. It's going to read each line. And again, this is really the rows of each spreadsheet. And it's going to split it whenever it gets to the new line itself. So if we go back on this, we could see it just here. So it's going to read this entire line in in one go. And then it'll get the next line in one go, and then so on. So that's what the code's doing. It's going to grab one line at a time. It's going to split it where it sees an N. And this is so, so by doing this, by saying, get me all the lines, I know exactly how many, how many lines there are, how many rows there are in this document. So I have made it 20 by 20, and it would only work properly if you have a square grid. So 20 by 20, 30 by 30, etc. So once I know how big it is, uh, so in this case it's read 20 lines, um, I want to create an array that size. So again, we're going from 0 to 19 in this case. Um, so my maze is equal to the array, which is obviously up here, level size, comma, level size. So it's going to create 20 by 20 grid. Okay, so that's loaded our Excel spreadsheet into, into Unity. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is sort of start reading through these through these lines one at a time. Again, save me typing it all out in front of you. Um, I'm creating. Two, I've got two for loops, so it's going to go through the first loop. Now again, I've used i and j because they're standard variables for looping through arrays. Normally, I do like to use row and column, so I may change these. So I'm going to loop through uh, one row at a time. I'm then going to split that line. So the lines that came from up here. I'm now going to split lines zero, so row zero, wherever there is a comma, and copy it into this string. So it's going to start splitting this down. So just like you saw before, it is going to take out each line, each sorry, each character at a time, and they are characters. That's kind of important to know at this point, not not integers, not numbers. Um, and then it's going to do the same again. So it's going through the J. So we're looping through from left to right, um, and I'm now going to try and convert it. So, because this is an integer array, it does need it as an integer, but the CSV file thinks they are characters, even if it is the number one. So, if it sees number one, it's going to convert it. So, this is what the int.try parse does. If it tries to convert the character to an integer, if it is successful, if that individual character is successful, it will output it into our maze array, which of course is, is up here. This is our maze array. So, it will copy that value so if it's a one, two, three, or so on, because we could have really zero to nine. Um, characters in our maze doing this method. So it's going to output it. Now if this fails, that's what the little exclamation mark is there, if this fails, if it does not succeed in converting, it's just going to put a zero by default. So if I was back here, if it sees zero, it'll put a zero in it. If it doesn't find a zero, and it doesn't find a one, then it'll also put a zero in. So actually it protects us without any problems. So now we've created our little maze array. I could at this point do a debug.log and just test to see if it's actually loaded, but where's the fun in that? Let's just keep on going through the whole thing. So our next bit, and this is where it gets a little more ugly on the code front. I've created the uh, the, the maze, the, the map, that's now full, it's got our level in it. We now want to create a level in the Unity itself. So again, I'm creating the 3D maze from this array. If it finds a zero, it's going to put a ground cube in, which is the same cube, and one for the wall cube. And like I said, it's the same cube, it's just going to change the height of it. So again, I'm looping through the rows and columns. Um, so if you've made any game like Tic-Tac-Toe, this should feel kind of familiar. You can see by this point I am using row and column, which is my preferred method. So I'm going to loop through from left to right and then down through the rows. So I'm now going to create a clone of this cube. So wherever we've created this cube up here, so it's going to instantiate. So it's going to create an object of this cube. Um, in this space. So I now create a new vector 3, so, th so it's our x, y, z coordinates. It's going to use this value time scale, so it's going to go 1, 2, 3, and so on. It's then going to create our uh, maze row column, which is, is it, is it a 0 or is it a 1? Time scale. So of course if it's a 0, the cube's going to be start at 0. If it's a 1 on our spreadsheet, it's going to create it one unit higher. So that will create our wall cube. 
and then again column time scale. So it's going to so that's our effectively our x and y coordinate. But because we're in three D space, it's actually our x and z coordinate because y is up and down. Um, Quaternion dot identity. This just means our rotation. Are we rotating the cube? No, we're not. So this just means give our rotation zero value. And then I'm transforming the local scale. So if I do want to change the size of the cube itself, let's say we want to make our, our maze, our labyrinth twice as big, or our dungeon, we can just change that number. And it'll scale the whole thing up proportionally. Okay, so this should, this should in theory now work. So if I just press save, this is the all important thing, press save, come back into Unity. Okay, there we go. Uh, level loader, and we'll drag the script onto it. So again, I selected the empty, drag the script on, we can see what map do we want. We're going to drag our map onto that text asset. Cube, well, I don't have a cube just yet, and we need to create a cube. So if I just file, well, sorry, not right click, sorry, create 3D object, create a cube. Um, it's currently just plain boring kind of white. We're just going to texture this. Okay, I've just jumped into Pixabay, um, where you can get lots of free textures from. I'm just going to download this one. I'm not even sure where it is, but it'll do better than plain white. Uh, yeah, that'll do for what I'm up to at the moment. So I'm just going to save that. Okay, so I've saved it into my assets folder. I'm just going to drag it onto the cube. It's still kind of plain white, but it'll do. Okay, so now I've got the cube. I'm just going to call this um, my wall cube. Obviously, like I said, it's doubling up as the floor as well. Um, I'm just going to drag this down. So as I drag this cube from here, just checking the sizes. Yep, it's one unit big. That's good. I'm going to drag it down. As I drag it to the assets window, it becomes a prefab. So now I can delete it from here. It still exists just there. Click back on my level loader. And now I can drag my cube on. Obviously, there's the scale setting. And hopefully, if I've done this correct, when I press play, we should see a level in our scene. Okay, I'm just going to come back into our scene window. There we go, we can see our entire level. Um, so we've now got a level to play with. Um, so we could now turn this into a, into a sort of a fully featured game. But that's how we can use CSV files. The great thing about this is, like I say, you could have a friend go into Excel. They could make you a whole different bunch of levels of different sizes. You could create doors on them. So they could sort of lead into the next map. And they could be enjoying having fun, save the CSV files, give them to you, the developer and you could have one of these uh, scripts in each level and just drag the, the CSV file on and you've got a map. Um, like I said, you could also, in Excel, um, sort of do different things as well. So for example, you could start to put the number two in and two would do something different. You know, maybe down here, like I say, if I put say a three there, you could say, well, three could load a, um, a door asset instead. Um, what about a fire pit? You, know, you could have four for a fire pit. Um, there's all sorts of kind of things you could do. Um, again, seven and seven. Maybe this is a little waterfall or something. It, it's entirely up to you. You know, you could have to write your own little idea. But whenever it sees a number, that's what you would instantiate. And obviously, in the code, that is where you would say you'd have to have an if statement just here. So rather than instantiating Q, you'd go if if is it, if maze. Oops, can't even write my own code. If maze row column equal equals seven. Well, I'll leave it as one for the now. Put some brackets around that. You know, if, if, if it equals one, I, that's where I have my, my wall cube. Well, I could again copy and paste all of this. Um, oops, running around a bit slow. If it equal equals uh, two, this is where I could have a door cube instead. So, well, not a door cube, but a door asset. So again, I could copy and paste this, copy, paste, I'm just call this sort of um, a door. Door. There we go. And now I could say instantiate. Oops. Clumsy on the keys there. And now I can instantiate a, a door object instead. And of course, for that to work, I would have to go back into Unity and physically make a prefab that is the door. Okay. Let's see where else we can go with this. Okay, so if you found any of this video useful, please do consider putting a like, positive comment below, sharing the video, and of course, subscribing to the channel. Um, I've just done a little bit more tinkering because I got a bit carried away. So what I've just very quickly done is I've created a floor cube, nothing really fancy there. Uh, I've created the wall cube. I've named them more sensitive, so floor and wall. In my code, I just did actually go and rename things a little bit by having the game object wall, floor, and the door ready for when I do a, a create a door for it. Um, I've then come down into my 
uh, main loops. I've just said if it equals zero, instantiate the floor. If it equals one, then instantiate the wall, um, and so on. I could I could probably change this a little bit to make it more optimized, but I won't for the moment. And then what I've also done is I've gone to a previous tutorial and I've grabbed my simple vehicle script. Now this tutorial comes from some of my uh, Unity beginner tutorials I did a while ago. There was also a video I did um, called uh, Abyss for a Game Jam. It's in here somewhere. Coming back well, quite a long way. Um, I have lost it. Never mind. It's in there somewhere. There's a video on doing a game jam um, where it shows you how to make this whole vehicle work. But in brief, I create a velocity uh, inside my update. I just get the key left arrow, right arrow, so you can rotate up to go forwards. And it was meant to be for like say, a simple UFO, so it's not a very realistic walking thing. But what I can now do is when I obviously got the level loader, um, I've got the main camera. Um, now through trial and error a little bit, if I press play, in fact I'll just sort of show you, if I press play, um, if I come into my scene view, when the camera starts up, the camera is actually sort of somewhat over here because our, our map starts drawing at zero, zero and works across and works up and the camera is about here. So what I've just done is I've sort of worked out what the coordinates are, so it's approximately two across, two up the screen and then Y, I've just put 0.8, so it's just above the ground like you can see. You know, if I sort of move these a little bit, you know, I sort of played about till I got the numbers right. And with anything with Unity, because this is currently playing, when I press stop, in fact I'll just go to the extreme, when I press stop, it goes back to where it was originally. And of course our level is now also gone. Um, that, that's fine. So now if I just press play, I can now sort of move around our little level, I can rotate, so I could start to create a proper level, I could play with sky boxes, I could put a ceiling on this whole thing, um, I could start to put objects in, I could put some bad guys in, and maybe that's there for a future tutorial. So again, if you've liked it, please leave a comment below if you'd like to see anything else. Um, also let me know, I, I'm quite happy to take suggestions for future videos. Um, but at the moment, I oh, that's something I should really cover, I can walk through these walls, that's no good. Um, so what I'm going to do, Shall I do that right now? No, I think we'll save that for a future tutorial. Uh, but basically we will need to put some collision detection on. We'll need to put a, a box collider so it can't actually travel through the walls. The thing is right now with this code, this code would physically allow us to walk through walls. But as I've said, this is actually covered in some of my earlier tutorials. This is covered in these and these stop you from actually walking through. So if you're ready for that next step, mix these tutorials with the level designer. Okay, that's it for this one and I shall see you in the next video.